Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to Divine Allegiance. I'm your host, Maulana Beg. Thank you for joining us. Today's topic, donations and endowments. In short, charities. Charities is an important part of life, whether you are a Muslim or non-Muslim, in any society, in any country, in any nationality. Wherever you come from, you see that Charities is something that is respected amongst everyone. People who give to others, to societies, to institutions, for any sort of purpose to help others. It is regarded as a good thing and is also respected. In Islam, charities is defined as anything that you give in the way of Allah, for Allah's pleasure. If it is for Allah's pleasure, it is charity. If it's not for Allah's pleasure, then it's not charity. So charity comes with intention. Now the word for charity is sadaqa. This is the general word, the umbrella term for everything. For all types of charities, wajib, non-wajib, everything. And in between and in under that category and that umbrella, there are many categories and types of charities that I will mention some of them at the end of the program. Let me just go into uh, saying that what is a charity? The charity is not just limited to money. In Islam, charity is many things. It could be a smile. It could be a good word. It could be a good gesture. It could be any niceties that we show to other people. It could be knowledge that we give to other people. It could be a good advice that we give to another people. So any sort of thing could be regarded as a charity. So as long as it is done for Allah's pleasure. The word sadaqa comes from the word sadiq, meaning to be truthful. When a person gives back to Allah, what he is actually doing is that he is testifying to the truthfulness of his own character. Allah gave him everything. Whatever we have is from Allah. And when we give back to Allah, when we give back in His way, then it means that we are being truthful to the trust that we have been given by Allah. Everything that we own and have, whether it is money or otherwise, it is from Allah. So when we give it back to Him, then we are being truthful to ourselves. And that's what it means to, do, to give sadaqah. To be truthful to yourself and to show your character as being an honest and truthful person. This is why it's so important. Allah has mentioned this every place He has mentioned prayer and worship. Wherever He see that He mentioned prayer, He says zakat. Zakat here in the term of general charity. So all of this, the reason it says is because the importance of that, that when you uh, pray, also show and testify to the truthfulness of your character. This is where we see that the word comes from and the idea comes from. And from there we see how it falls under. There's an ayat in the Quran where Allah speaks to the believers and says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tansurullah yansurukum. O you who believe, if you help Allah, Allah will help you. So, First of all, Allah is asking for help. Now, when we actually reflect on this verse of the Quran, do you really think that you can help Allah or that Allah needs help? Obviously, Allah does not need help in reality. But He is, what He's saying is that He is giving us the chance to come forward and give back to his way because everything we have is from Allah whether it is money whether it is power our strength ability opportunity all of it is from Allah and when he gave it to us obviously that just shows how generous Allah is when he gave it to us now he's saying I want you to give it back to me to prove your character to prove yourself. Now, here the question begs to be asked that if Allah wanted 
since everything is from him, if Allah wanted it back, why didn't Allah keep what he needed and what he wanted from us in the first place and give us the rest? It's like withholding our charity. If Allah had to give us $100 and then he says, give khums and give one-fifth of it back to me. So Allah, you know, it would be better if you just take out the one-fifth and give us the 80. Then we don't have that burden of giving it ourselves because that's the actual pain that we have to go through. If it goes in our pockets, it's difficult for us to take it out. So it's better, Allah, that you don't give it to us in the first place. If you don't give it to us, we won't have the pain of taking it out. So Allah says, well, if I do that, then that would just show how generous I am that I give. But how are you going to show your character? How are you going to show your truthfulness, improve yourself and build your hereafter and seek everlasting pleasures and happiness? I want it you to reap the benefits. That's why I want you to give it back. I give it to you so that you may give it back on your own accord, through your own free will. When you do that, that's when you show yourself. This is the idea of testifying to our own faith. It is when Allah gave it to us, now He wants us to give it back. This is charity in short. Now let me just go into that and explain how this actually works. My friends, why is Allah asking us to give charity? Why is that? Why didn't He keep the charity in the first place? Allah, you know, you need this money for the poor people. Take it from our risk and give us the rest. And you can spend it on the poor. But you know, there's an important aspect here and this is where we need to understand the wisdom, the actual wisdom behind sadaqa and charity. Why is Allah asking you to give charity? From here, we will understand it much better. You see, my friends, when you give to something, any institution, any college, any organization, any masjid, anything you give to, it's like you are investing in that thing. Anything, for example, you want to go in a business, you have money. So what you do is that you invest a capital. Once you put in the capital, you see it's an investment you are making. And once you make the investment, then you start to be concerned about that business. It's natural because you made an investment. You put your money in there. Not just money, I'm just giving an example of money. Even time and effort and or any other resource that you invest in something, you see that you're concerned about it. For example, with your children, you invested your time and energy in them. And hence you are concerned about their welfare. You look into to see, to make sure that they're doing well. Because there's a lot of investment that went into them. Your own personal investment. So when you invest in a business, everyone starts to uh, worry about it, are concerned about it, and start thinking about it. You know, let me give you an example. Uh, the stock market. How many people actually pay attention to stocks? You know, there is a, there's channels, CNBC and, and, and other channels that are dedicated to business and stocks. The newspaper always has the stock section, the stock index. Now, who reads the newspaper nowadays? But still, you know, the iPhone has an app for stocks. Whether you like it or not, it's there. I never opened the stocks tell you the truth and I don't know how many people ever do they never open that app they never look into stocks why because it's not important it's irrelevant for them in their lives and I remember once that a good friend of mine advised me hey listen uh, you know let me give you some advice 
You know what a good investment is? Uh, he said BlackBerry. Invest in BlackBerry. It was a time that BlackBerry was making a comeback. So everyone was excited and they were investing money. So I also had a little bit of money and invested in it. And I invested in the stocks. First time invested in the stocks. It wasn't that much of a money anyway. It was a small amount of money. It was irrelevant. If I lose it all, it didn't matter. But because they, everyone was doing it, so I also got in a frenzy and did it. And once I did it, now the next day, all of a sudden, I'm like opening the app to find out what's going on with the stock. And every day I'm looking into it. And why? I was never interested in this. But now that I invested a little bit of something in a stock, now I'm invested to see how it does. I'm invested in it. Even with a small amount, I'm invested in it. You see, my friends, when you give in Allah's way, it is like an investment that you're making in Allah's way. It makes you concerned. You start looking into it. Is it succeeding? Is it not succeeding? When you give some charity to any organization, you see that you are now invested in that. And then you start to feel uh, that that organization's success is important for you. It becomes important for you. It creates an attachment a bond between you and that investment that you have made creates a bond whether you like it or not investments lead to attachments and attachments make you concerned about your investment now you are invested in it it makes you hope that your investment becomes successful. It makes you pray that your investment becomes successful. You start making dua. You start to supplicate. You start to ask Allah. Allah, increase my risk. And by that you mean the investment I made, make it grow. Why? Because it's an investment I made. And that's why the success and failure of the cause of that business becomes your success and failure. If that business fails, then it feels like you have failed. If the business succeeds, it feels like you have succeeded. My friend and brothers and sisters, when you invest in Allah, when you invest in his deen, when you invest in his religion, then this is exactly what happens. Now you start to care. You start to become worried. You start praying. You start wanting success for the cause. It becomes personal for you. It's not a third person thing. It's now yours. You have ownership in it. You have ownership in it. Fi Sabilillah has become a public entity where you are invested in it and have ownership in it and you feel like an owner that I care about it because I invested so much into it. Only when you invest in it. Truly, that's why Allah asked and encouraged us and wanted everyone to give sadaqa, give charity. The more the better. Yes. If you invest in a hundred dollars in a masjid, it's not a big deal. Sometimes the hundred dollars is just to get them out of your way. They're a bother to you. They're asking all the time. So if you write a hundred dollar check, they'll stop asking. So you give the hundred dollar, whether it fails or not, it's not a big deal. You need to see yourself now. How much do you have to give? What is the right amount of sadaqah? 
What is the right amount? What is the amount of sadaqah that you should pay? Just enough so that you start being concerned. So that you feel ownership. If you give a hundred dollars, for some people, hundred dollars is a lot. A student, he gives a hundred dollars. For him, it's a lot of money. So he feels ownership. And for someone who's rich, who earns a lot more money, like a professional or a doctor or someone like that, for him, it's a lot more money. When he gives a lot more, if he gives less than that, he doesn't feel so invested. But if he gets more than that, you see, he feels invested. This is the important aspect. How much should we give? Don't see the one-fifth of homes or anything like that. Look at yourself and see how much money do I have that if I put into Allah's deen that I will feel ownership and I will be concerned about it. That's how much you need to give. That's how much you need to give. And that's when it becomes personal to you. Allah's deen becomes personal. The cause becomes personal. Everything around you becomes personal, my friends. Why did Allah mention zakat all the time? Because of this reason. Because He wanted you to be invested in this. He wanted you to have ownership in this. And once you get that ownership, the feeling of ownership, your prayers would have meaning and will become relevant. When it says that you give zakat and sadaqah before prayer, it's not like a dollar and that's it that you do it. No, it's about give that enough that you feel invested that when you pray it becomes real. It's a relevant prayer that you're making. That is what is necessary from us. Once I went to this camp, uh, and it was a youth camp. I was invited there as a guest. And I went there and uh, usually there's always a Q&A with the youngsters. Which is there also. It was a Q&A with the youngsters. And usually the questions are the same everywhere. And you get used to it. The same questions, same answers. And they're repeated all the time. That's the way. But this time, that one camp, I heard a question that piqued my interest. It was interesting. Very interesting question. I, the kid who asked the question was asking out of jest, jest and humor. That's fine. But it was a very deep question when you actually look at it. This kid, he just asked a question and it was actually sincere, you know, in the tone that he had. And he asked the question that, you know, we hear about Imam coming back and this happening and all this happening and Islam is going back. I have a question, he said. He said, go ahead. And everyone was there. It's in front of everyone. And his question was, what if Islam fails? Yes. What if Islam fails? Let's say if Imam comes back and he fails, you know, he loses the battle. What happens? Now, you see, interesting question, really interesting question, hypothetical, interesting. But the fact is, the answer to that is that the question, let's keep the question to the side. Tell me, how much are you concerned about that? Do you even care whether there's victory or there's not? Whether you, uh, do you even care if the Imam will win or not? What does it mean to you? See, that's the more important question. And let's answer that one first. If you're not concerned, if you think that, you know what? If the Imam fails and life goes on as it is going on right now, you know, I mean, hey man, you know, we face a lot of things in this life. We went through COVID-19. So we'll get through that also. And life will go on in whatever shape and form. If that is our attitude, it means we haven't invested in the Imam because we are not concerned. When a person actually invests and gives sadaqah and gives charity and, and gives towards Allah's way, then you see 
it becomes real. He does care. Not only he wants the Imam to win, he is going to make himself sure and certain that there's going to be victory. That's why I'm investing in this. I'm not investing in a failed venture. I'm investing in the promise of Allah and it is certain. And I feel ownership in this. This is the actual way. When should we give? And how much you should give? I mentioned that. When should you give? My friends, let me explain that to you in a bit. You know, um, there are two terms in Islam. One is helping Allah. That ayat I read for you, in Tansurullah, it means Nusrat. Nusrat means help. And there's another term called Khidma. Khidmat. Uh, being a khadim. There's a nasir and there's a khadim. Khidmat means serving something. In both of these things you give. But the difference between nusrat and khidmat is in timing. Is in timing. That's where the difference is between the two. When someone is in need and needs money and he's asking for help, and if you help at that point and at that time, then you are actually helping him. If he's not in need and not asking for help, and then you give to him, this is called khidma, meaning service. You are doing service. You're not helping, You're doing service. For example, if the masjid is starting off if your center is starting off and it needs help right now and they're asking for help please donate please donate please donate what happens if you give at that point where there's nothing there then it is called nusrat it's called help now let's say that the masjid is established it's a rich masjid everyone gives there it doesn't need anyone's help now you only give because you know what? You just want to help Islam somehow. So you give money. Then it's not help. It is called Nusrat. For example, you go to Masjid Al Haram or Imam Brothers Haram. You know, and you can donate big amounts there. It doesn't matter because it's a huge place. It's a wealthy place. Your donation is like a drop in the ocean. But right now in the masjid that you might come from locally, they might need help just to pay rent. And if you help at that point, it is called help. That's why, for example, when the Prophet was in need, when Rasulullah was in need, he asked for help. He asked his uncle, Abbas. And his uncle Abbas refused. He says, I can't get involved. It's too much heat. So Rasulullah went to his other uncle, Abu Talib. And Abu Talib said, yes, of course. And he helped. So Abu Talib became a helper of Islam. Now Abbas, later on, after Fatih Makkah and all of that, he accepted and he gave a lot to Islam. But you know what? All of that was after Islam was established. He had the opportunity to be a helper. At that point, he could have helped, but he didn't. He had the opportunity to be a helper. My friends, when is it for the right time for you to help? Your time to give in charity is right now. Allah has opened the door for you to become a helper. This door will not be open all the time. The door right now is open. Whatever you give right now, you are becoming a helper. This is a blessing of Allah on all of us in the times that we live in. What are these times? It's called the time of ghaybat. Ghaybat of the Imam is the time where the door of being a helper is open. Right now, anyone who gives is regarded as a helper, not as a servant, not as khadim, not khidmat, but helper. Right now, it is time. When the Imam will come back, and Islam will be established, 
it will be said that people will be running around with bags of money trying to find anyone who is deserving that they can give sadaqah and they will not find it because everyone will be prosperous. You will be begging to look for someone to give to and you won't be able to find it. This is the time. Right now is the time. This is where we need to actually use the time to give it, my friends. The time for charity is right now. Now, let me just go into some of the different types of charities and we will wrap it up for today. Different types of charities. My friends, and there are different reasons for it also. Different charities have different reasons. For example, uh, Allah mentions some of these in the Quran also. For example, uh, giving charity openly or giving charity secretly. There are two types of charities to give. Either you give it openly in public in front of others or you give it in secret where no one knows about it. Both of them have benefits. When you give in public, when you give charity in open, it builds the community. When you give charity in secret, it builds your character. So both of them you should do. You should build the community, the Muslim community, and you should also build your character. Give something in secret, give something in open. Both of these ways are there and it's meant for different reasons. Some charities are wajib, some are mustahab. For example, wajib like mustahab charity to give to the haram of Imam Hussain or any of the Imams for that matter. And it's an issue that many people ask. And I've heard people say this, that why do we make this big haram for Imam Hussain and all of these things? Did Imam Hussain want these things? The issue is not about what Imam Hussain wanted. It's about what Allah wants. It is what, about what Allah wants. And Allah says, Allah, Whoever honors and enhances the signs of Allah, it is from the taqwa of the heart. It is from the goodness of his heart that it comes. That anyone who wants to enhance this, Imam Hussain and his shahada is a sign of Allah. And hence, anything that we can give to enhance it, to make it bigger, to make it grander, then all of that is going and falling under this umbrella that Allah wants. That enhance the sign of Allah. This is a mustahab charity. A wajib charity, for the same reason, is zakatul fitr. Zakatul fitr uh, that we will give on Eid, what is it meant for? It's a small amount. You know, one plate of food. That's all it is. Like It's, it's like a mud of food. Uh, $10. It's nothing. But why is it there for? It's not there to help poor people pay their bills. That's not what Zakatul Fitr is for. People don't understand it. Zakatul Fitr is so that the Eid that Allah has made for Muslimin can be enhanced. That people who are able who are able and rich give to the people who are poor on the day of Eid so that the poor people can enjoy Eid, not pay their bills. That they should go out and buy clothes and, and eat food and do something with that money, buy something for themselves so that everyone knows that this is eat for them. That's what it's meant for. That's why it said that give Zakatul Fitr in the city that you live in or in the place that you live in, the region that you live in so that the people on the day of Eid can enjoy Eid. Not that they can eat food, for example. That's not what Zakatul Fitr is for. That's other donations in Sadaqat. So this is a different way. And so... Investment, my friends, in, you know, uh, waqf. What is waqf? Waqf is a type of sadiqe jariya. Sadiqe jariya means uh, perpetual charity, something that you give and the benefit of it is everlasting. For example, waqf uh, is an endowment or a charity that you give to a masjid and make the property or the money belong to the masjid while the benefit is for all and everyone in the way of Allah. 
That's what it means. Meaning waqaf al ayn that you make this uh, the property or whatever you're giving, like a book or the Quran, to now belong to this masjid only, and the benefit is for everyone to take from that masjid. And so this is waqf. All of these fall under the idea of charity, and all of these are meant for the wisdom that I mentioned to you. It is an investment that we make to uh, make ourselves feel ownership for the cause of Allah. This is the same reason that Imam Ali uh, paid so much attention to Abbas and he growing up, he was always looking at Abbas, concerned about Abbas. Why? Because Abbas was Imam Ali's investment in Allah's mission. And he was concerned about it. This is why make that investment and then you'll feel the, the attachment and the bond and the ownership for this cause. May Allah bless you all. Thank you for watching Divine Allegiance. We hope you like the show. If you like the show, please go on and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel and share with your family and friends to spread the message. I'm your host, Maulana Baig. Until next time, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.